So today I'm talking about the Haiku vector icon format. So Haiku is an operating system, and it needs a format to represent its icons, meaning like the like icons on the desktop, the icons in the folder. So these are images. The sort of default that you might have you might use to represent them is a bitmap image. So you just have all of the colors for each pixel. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, Haiku wants to be able to support all of these sizes from like 16 by 16, which you can see the small ones, and then like 64 by 64, which are the ones on the desktop, all using one file and have it all come in at under a kilobyte. And so they decided to use ve a vector image format. So this is kind of similar to SVG, but instead of being like trying to be compatible with the browser, we're trying to be as small as possible. And instead of XML, we're using a binary format. And so this is a custom binary format for representing vector graphics. Uh, and so there's a custom editor, because you have a custom format, you need a program to actually make them. The interesting thing is in the center you can see the editing area, just like you would with any image program. So this is, you can see the grid, those are the, that's 64 by 64 pixels. You might be going, wait a minute, you said not bitmap vector, why are there still pixels? So the native size of this format is 64 by 64, so that's what the coordinate system, so an integer, if you have an integer value, it's going to be in this 64 by 64 plane. Uh, and then the reason you want to be able to do that is because when you render this, you want to have the straight lines line up to an integer pixel so that it's crisper. Uh, and so that's like sort of like uh, the guy who like made the format was also working with the rendering library, so he knew all of these sort of like things that go back and forth between the two things, between like the format and the how you're rendering it. Okay, so you can see this is my like sample icon, which is why it's kind of like not very pretty, because uh, I care about the binary format and not really drawing things. Uh, but so if you take that and you save it as, in HVIF you, and you look at it in a hex editor, this is the haiku hex editor, you get this, which is a bunch of the bytes of the file. And you can see there's not very many, so it is a small file. Uh, for like real icons, you ha it takes like between 500 and 700 bytes for most of them, up to a kilobyte for really complicated ones, since vector, the more complex the vector icon is, the more shapes and like colors it has, the more space it takes up. But for our really simple one, it's not very many bytes. Uh, but this is a little hard to present, so I made a diagram. This is exactly the same bytes. So you can see that there's there's three big colorful sections, uh, and so those are the the yellow is the styles. So those are basically the colors and the color gradients. There's the paths, which are the outlines, and then there's the shapes, which combine the colors and the paths so that you actually have something to render. So if you didn't have any shapes, then the whole file is pointless because it's not going to nothing's going to show up. Uh, you would just have like, you know, I've, if, even if I defined it, a bunch, I find a bunch of colors, but didn't make any shapes that were filled with them, it wouldn't matter, like they wouldn't be very useful. Uh, but anyway, so the first four bytes, which are not highlighted, those are, so NCIF in ASCII, so that's, it's a in 32 that's a little Indian, so it's reversed when you look in the hex editor, it's actually IFCN for flat icon. These are the, ma this is the magic number that lets the parser go, okay, you told me this was an HVIF file, but the first four bytes match. If yes, then like this is probably actually an HVIF file and you're not like tricking me by giving me like a PNG or something. So th those four bytes uh, are just used to like identify that this is a file of this format. Um, the next byte, uh, the two, is telling us how many styles we have. You'll notice that there are also twos in front of the blue thing and the green part. Uh, that's because I have two styles, two paths, and two shapes. That's a, That's like just my example, not like, they don't have to be the same. Uh, and so we have two styles, and the first, there's, you can see there's two things there. So those are going to be the color inside the H and the gradient inside the blob. And so the first one the, is the white. So this is two bytes, 0, 5, FF. Um, and so colors in uh, this format are represented in RGBA. So you have four channels. Each channel needs a byte to represent it, red, green, blue, and then transparency. So this color, despite you thinking you need four bytes, you only need two, the first one is the type of style, which five is part of an enum in the C++ code, uh, and it means that this is a flat color, so not a gradient, that it is an opaque color, so we don't need, to need a transparency channel, and that it is a gray, meaning that all three of the color channels are equal to each other. So now we only need one more byte to tell that this is white. So FF means white, since all of the channels are going to be set to max. The next style is our gradient. So 0, 2, it's a gradient. So 0, 3, and 0, 4 just make, mean that it's a conic gradient, so a particular kind of gradient, and that all of the colors in it are opaque. So we don't have to care about transparency. 
zero two, the one right before the pink section, is telling us that we have two colors in this gradient. Uh, and those colors are 100% red and 100% blue. There are four bytes because the first byte is the offset of where that color starts. So 0 and 86 are the offsets. The rest of the other three bytes are just the colors. And I picked colors that are relatively easy to recognize in hex because I was trying to parse this file to figure out how this works. Uh, OK, so we've done the colors. Uh, so now we're going to do the outlines. So you can see that the H is all straight lines, and the blob is a mix of straight lines and curves. That's intentional for my example, so I can show you more features. OK, so we have two paths. So it starts with two, because we have two paths. And then in the blue section, 0a is the type of our path. All of these objects in the file start with a byte that tells you what, the, what kind they are. Uh, and so this 0a means that this is a path that is entirely straight lines. So a path is made out of segments. Each segment can either be a line or a curve. Uh, if we have just lines, uh, then we can know, like, we know what that's all we're, we can save some bytes. I'll show you the other version next. So 0a, all straight lines. 0c tells us how many uh, line segments, how many segments we have in this path. And so c in hex is 12. So we have 12 line segments. OK, so you're, you're drawing your path. You want to add a new line segment. That means that you're going to start wherever you, your path ends currently, and you need one more xy coordinate to draw a straight line to. So our, each segment is going to need an x and a y. The format that we're using has to be, is handling both integers and floats. So it, they have a special format that lets them do one byte integers for integers that are inside, that are like around basically inside our 64 by 64 native format, but you can do a little bit outside. If you need to go more outside, you can use a two byte integer. And if you need to do a floating point number, it also takes two bytes. So you're either going to, for each, uh, each x and each y, it's going to take one or two bytes to represent them. So each coordinate is going to be anywhere from two to four bytes. This example all has three bytes, and all of the x's are one byte, and all of the y's are two bytes. Uh, it's just an accident. Uh, but so that's why all of those are three bytes. And so then we can do the blobs outline. So this starts with a number that tells you the type. So 0, 06 means that this is a fancy line, it's a fancy path. It has, you can do any kinds of segments. All of the segments can be different types. 08 tells us there are eight segments. That one's more readable than the 0C. Uh, and then you have DE6E. This, these are the command bytes. These tell us what the type of each segment is. So you need, so the types of segments you have are line, curve, horizontal line, vertical line. We don't need a whole byte to represent those, because you can get 256 things in a byte. So we don't, we don't need to put a new byte at the front of each of these uh, segments. So instead, we put, we stuck them all in the command bytes so that we can have two bits per thing while leaving, keeping our format byte aligned. So you have two bytes because we have eight segments, so we need uh, 16 bits. So then we have, and those, those, so DE60 means that you should next see a line, a curve, a vertical line, a curve, a line, a curve, a line, and a vertical line, uh, which are the types that are labeled below. Um, and so like the lines you can see are st like still like, you know, those happen to be like two bytes, uh, so that's still just one xy coordinate. For the curve, you need a bunch more bytes because you need three xy coordinates. So like you need, so if you picture like an image editor that's like sort of a vectory, like you have a curve, you have the, we already have the start point because that's where we, our path already ends. And then we have the end point, so we need at least one xy coordinate. And then you know those like handle -y things that you drag back and forth? The other two points are basically the handle -y things. They sort of describe what the curve looks like. Uh, and so you, you, need six, you need six numbers in there. And then the vertical line, the reason that we have vertical and horizontal lines is you only need half a coordinate, because you already know that either the x or the y, depending on the type, is going to be the same as the previous point. So now, instead of writing up to four bytes, we, can only, we only have to write up to two, which is really exciting. You're saving bytes. It's getting smaller. That's like our goal with this format. Uh, so, OK, so we, th that's that section. So we're actually almost done. We're on to the shape section. So like this is the section that actually makes things render. So we have two shapes. That's what the two says. And then the order that they're in is from back to front. So the blob comes first because the blob is behind the H. Uh, and so the both of these, you'll notice, start with 0a. There's only one type of shape. I looked at the code. I don't know why. He, he has a type, I guess, so he can decide to have more types later. But there, there's only one type of shape. Uh, the second byte is the style. So every, every, every shape has exactly one, one style, so you don't need to tell us how many there are. So it's just, oh, one here means the blob is, has the second style, which was the gradient, and the H has the first style, because it has zero. 
And then this pink section, the 0, 1, 0, 1 in the blob, means we have one path, and it's the second path in the path section. So we're just indexing into this sort of array, starting for indexing from 0. Uh, and then the 0, 0 at the end of the blob means I don't have any extra stuff. I'm the most basic kind of shape. Uh, so then the blob is all done, because it has a 0 there. So the h, we're going to skip past the path, because that's the same, to the 0, 2. Which, so this byte uh, is full of flags. So the fact that it's 2 means that the flag bit that's second from the right uh, is, the, is the one that's set. So we only have one flag set, so we have one extra thing. Um, and that extra thing is a, tra is a transformation matrix. So this, ac this path, this each path is actually up on the far left of the icon, and it's small. And so this matrix makes it big and centered. Uh, and I created this matrix by dragging it around in the, in the UI editor, so I don't totally know what these numbers mean. But I know that there's six 24-bit floating point numbers because 32 bits was like too much. We don't need that much for an icon, uh, but we need more than 16 for some reason. But anyway, so we have uh, six 24-bit floating point numbers at the end. Um, and that's how, now you know exactly how this fits in binary. But now, but you know, that's just like reading a textbook. That's not so much fun. You have to make sure you actually understand it. So the next goal was to change the icon and have it like still be a valid icon that displayed the way I wanted it to display. So I wanted to change this to this. So that means that this is zoomed out, which might be confusing for you. But so this is a white H on a red to blue background. And this is a black H on a green to blue background. So it's a relatively simple change. Uh, we're changing the styles. So if you think back, we had a style for the H and a style for the gradient. So we actually only needed to change a couple of bytes. Uh, changing it from, black to, from white to black was actually a simplifying choice. So we only have to change three bytes. The have to we have to change that one in z instead of 05FF, it's 0500 to change it from white to black, since it's still a gray. It's much simpler. Uh, and then to change the red to green, we just need to swap those two bytes so that the red channel, and the, which was 100%, and the green channel was zero, swap so that it's entirely green. Uh, and, that, and editing the, in the hex editor is actually how I got this. If I had more than 10 minutes, I, I would have showed you a demo of like it actually happening. Uh, but in conclusion, Haiku is really awesome, and byte formats are super neat, and I don't really have more of a conclusion other than this was fun.